It chanced in the warm and beautiful spring of the year 1665, a little before the saddest summer that ever London saw, that I went to the Bowling Green at Piccadilly, whither at that time the best gentry made continual resorts. There I met Mr. Cowley, who had lately left Barnelms. I entreated him to dine with me at my lodging in the temple, which he most courteously promised, and that so eminent a guest might not lack better entertainment than cooks or vintners can provide, I sent to the house of Mr. John Milton, in the artillery walk, to beg that he would also be my guest, for I hoped that they would think themselves rather united by their common art than divided by their different factions. And so indeed it proved. For while we sat at table they talked freely of men and things, as well ancient as modern, with much civility. Nay, Mr. Milton, who seldom tasted wine, both because of his singular temperance and because of his gout, did more than once pledge Mr. Cowley, who was indeed no hermit in diet. At last, being heated, Mr. Milton begged that I would open the windows. Nay, said I, if you desire fresh air and coolness, what would hinder us, as the evening is fair, from sailing for an hour upon the river? To this they both cheerfully consented, and forth we walked, Mr. Cowley and I, leading Mr. Milton between us to the temple stairs. There we took a boat, and thence we were rowed up the river. The wind was pleasant, the evening fine, the sky, the earth, and the water beautiful to look upon. But Mr. Cowley and I held our peace, and said nothing of the gay sights around us, lest we should too feelingly remind Mr. Milton of his calamity, whereof, however, he needed no monitor. For soon he said sadly, Ah, Mr. Cowley, you are a happy man. What would I now give but for one more look at the sun and the waters and the gardens of this fair city? <laughs>